One of the most frustrating issues faced by every iPhone user happens when their iPhone runs out of storage. And then when they go to find out what's taking up all their space, they find it isn't photos or videos. It's system data. Apple isn't specific about what this means, so it can be difficult to know how to track it down and delete it. And unfortunately, tech YouTubers are giving out a lot of bad advice. But not us. We've done our homework. We're gonna tell you what Apple won't about what's really in system data and show you how to clear it out for good. Right now, system data is taking up 8.54 gigabytes of my iPhone storage space. This video is a challenge. Let's see how low we can get this number. Your number might be a lot higher than David's, and the higher it is, the more you can save by going through these steps. Our first step is to clear history and website data on Safari, clear out those caches. Open up the settings app, scroll down, and tap on Safari, then scroll down, and tap clear history and website data, then tap clear history and data. If you see the option here to keep your tabs or close your tabs, close your tabs. Let's tap close tabs. I'm also gonna do this in Chrome on my iPhone. I use Chrome sometimes to get around the paywalls because I don't wanna give a website my email address or pay you know, $9.99 for a subscription. So let's open up the Chrome app. Tap on the three dots in the lower right hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap clear browsing data, and then tap clear browsing data at the very bottom. And uh, how about I just tap clear browsing data one more time. Let's head back to the settings app and see how much we've cleared out now. And I'm down to 7.45 gigabytes already. So that's already a full gigabyte of storage space saved. That's awesome. Next, we're gonna clear another cache on your iPhone, the app store cache. I'll close out of settings, pull open the app store, and how do we clear the App Store cache? Well, you can tap on any icon at the bottom of the screen 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Like a lot of developer options on your iPhone, which we'll get to later, this triggers a process in the background that clears the cache. There's no pop-up. That's unfortunate, but your App Store cache has been cleared. Next up, an important message is setting that can impact your system data usage. Let's head back to the Settings app and tap back to the main page of Settings. Scroll down and tap on messages, then scroll down and tap on keep messages and set this to 30 days. But make sure you save all those cute puppy pictures your mom sent you before you go change in the setting or you might lose them. Yeah, you will lose them because when I tap 30 days, it'll delete my older messages permanently. Let's just tap delete, let's do it for the video. Those are the big ones you see in every single video on this subject, but we found a whole lot more. Like clearing your reading goals in the books app, let's tap back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap on books, and then scroll down and tap on clear reading goals data, tap clear reading goals data. Who wants to read anyway? Come on. Not me, get a real book. Get a book. Physical. Ebook. Next up, deleting saved voices and accessibility can clear out some system data too. Especially if you're like me and when you get first get your iPhone, you're listening to all the voices and seeing what they sound like and you forget to go back and delete those voices. Well, why would you have to? Yeah, well, it you takes up some of the system data storage. That's so why. let's tap back to the main page of settings. We're gonna scroll up and tap on accessibility, then tap on spoken content, then tap on voices. I'll tap in English and for example, I have Agnes here using 1.6 megabytes. Not a ton, but if you downloaded a bunch of voices, it can add up pretty quickly. Swipe right to left and then tap delete. This isn't a video for people who only want broad strokes, David. Mm -hmm. This is a people who want to get in there and clear this out. Yep. We're showing you how. Yep, make sure to do that for all the voices you no longer need on your iPhone. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it so far. Next up, we'll talk about deleting large mail attachments. Yeah, so let's open up the mail app on our iPhones. Then tap the filter button in the lower left-hand corner of the screen and then tap filtered by. Make sure to select only mail with attachments and here you'll see all of your emails with attachments. You might wanna go in and start deleting some of those because they can take up system data. Next up, dictionaries. Turning off too many dictionaries isn't a good idea if you use the Translate app on your iPhone, but it can clear up system data. Let's head back to the main page of the settings app. We've got a long way to go here. Then we're gonna tap on general 
Then scroll down and tap on dictionary. So right now I've got five dictionaries, but Spanish dictionary, do I really need that if I'm not translating to Spanish on my iPhone? No. We can just uncheck the Spanish dictionary and there you go. Clearing out some system data. The Apple dictionary might be important because it has words like AirPods in them if you want those to show up like they would. Oh, interesting. Yeah, spelled correctly, you might want to hold on to that. Let's tap back to general, upper left hand corner of the screen, then tap on language and region. So right now, Spanish is one of my preferred languages. I don't think so. Swipe right to left and then tap delete. Note that your iPhone will restart after you do this. Next up, the Siri and search section of settings where we're going to delete some history. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, tap on Siri and search, tap on Siri and dictation history, and then tap delete Siri and dictation history. There it goes. Back to settings general, let's talk about some fonts. Yeah, let's tap back, tap on general, then tap on fonts. Right now I have Filmotype Lucky installed on my iPhone. I don't need that. No, you can get rid of that, David. Let's swipe right to left and then tap remove. And now it says I have no fonts installed on my iPhone. We removed fonts, but what about the saved significant locations on your iPhone? Let's tap back to general and back to the main page of settings, then tap on privacy and security, tap location services and scroll all the way down to system services, tap on that, then scroll down and tap on significant locations. If this switch is on, turn it off. This will also save some battery life for you. And next up, we're gonna talk about the app privacy report. Tap back to the main page of settings, tap on privacy and security, then scroll down and tap on app privacy report. If this is on, you got a whole bunch of data in here. Look how ridiculous Facebook's network activity is nuts. Crazy. Crazy, but we can scroll all the way down and turn off the app privacy report. Any existing information on app activity will be immediately deleted. That's how you're freeing up some system data. Tap OK. The app privacy report, it kind of got hyped up a little bit. Maybe we also hyped it up a little bit too, uh, but it's been kind of disappointing. There's really not much you can you can do with it. Yeah, unless you know what all the domains mean yeah. and do a lot of research, you're not really going to. Yes. And, and you can't even change. It's not like you can change anything. Right. Surprise, Facebook is doing a lot. It's the right thing to do. Next up, let's close out your apps. To do that, we need to open up the app switcher if your iPhone has a home button, double press that home button. If your iPhone does not have a home button, swipe up from the very bottom of the screen to the center of the screen to open the app switcher. Swipe these up and off the screen, free up some RAM. Next up, update your phone. In the settings app, scroll down, tap general, tap software update, and if an update's available, tap download and install. iOS 16.2 added some really cool new features that we talked about during our last live stream. You should join us Whoa. at our next one. Hit the subscribe button and tap that notifications bell to find out right when we go live. Next, sync your iPhone to your computer. I did this yesterday and saved a whole gigabyte. Well, let's get out our lightning cable here, plug this into the phone, and we'll open up Finder. Click on David's iPhone. Click sync in the lower right hand corner of the screen. And there we go, we're synced. We're about to go really deep, but before we do, you should restart your iPhone. That can also clear up system data. If you have an iPhone without Face ID, just press and hold the power button, swipe slide to power off. If your iPhone does have Face ID, it's the side button and either volume button simultaneously. Swipe a slide to power off. Your iPhone will shut down. This is especially important if you haven't restarted your iPhone in a while. Well, David's phone turns back on. Let's talk a little bit about system data. System data is necessary. And Apple doesn't talk a lot about things like RAM, but iPhones have RAM. For instance, the iPhone 14 Pro has six gigabytes of RAM. When your iPhone's RAM fills up, it makes room by moving the data to virtual memory, which is part of system data. And if your iPhone didn't use virtual memory and didn't use system data, your iPhone would freeze every time it ran out of RAM. Let's enable developer mode on this iPhone. Simple. I'll open Xcode on my computer. And then I'm going to go to the top where it says window and open devices and simulators. And unfortunately, David's phone isn't here yet. So we're going to hook it up to my computer to enable developer mode. All right, there we go. All and right. there's your cable. Allow accessory to connect. I will tap allow on my end and choose not to use Google Drive. For... Now I can tap on David's iPhone over here and you need to go to settings, 
scroll down to privacy and then scroll all the way to the bottom to developer mode. Tap on that and then turn on the switch. And we're going to restart. Restart. And gentlemen. Well, now that the developer mode is on, there's some cool settings we can check out. Well, let's open up the settings app, scroll down, and one below TV provider, you'll see developer with the little hammer icon. Tap on that. And we have four things we need to do. What's the first one? Fast app termination. It's crazy, but it works for the purposes of this video. Yep. Every time you close an app, it doesn't just minimize. It wipes it out of the memory. Yeah, so if you scroll down, fast app termination, turn that switch on. And then we have a few caches that we can clear in here. The first one is clear experience cache. Let's tap on that. And again, just like the App Store cache, no pop-up, it's happening in the background. Next up, reset local data on next launch. Yeah, so if I scroll down here, We've got a switch here. Let's turn that on. Next time David opens the news app, it's going to clear that cache. And the last one in this section, at least, is re-index all items with identifiers under the spotlight section. Yeah, let's scroll down, re-index all items with identifiers, tap yep. on that. And again, no pop-up, but it did happen. You're right. So let's head back to iPhone storage. We're at 4.07 gigabytes of system data. Now that we've gone deep, let's come back down to Earth and talk about how to clear specific app caches. Not every app has a function that allows you to delete that app's specific cache. There is a foolproof way to delete any app's cache, and that's to delete it and reinstall it again. But fortunately, Twitter is an app where you can just do it from the settings menu. Let's open the Twitter app on my iPhone. Tap on your account icon, upper left-hand corner of the screen. Tap on settings and support, and then tap settings and privacy. Then scroll down and tap on accessibility, display, and languages. Then tap data usage. Then tap media storage and tap clear media storage, clear media storage. That's been cleared, but wait. We also have web stores, Let's tap on that. Tap clear all web storage. Just know that other apps might have different names for this. This is called media storage, web storage. Other apps might be local storage or even temporary files. Look for those buzzwords when you're trying to clear a cache. Yep, sometimes clearing the app's cache will, won't clear system data, but it will clear some storage space within that app. I did this on Twitter the other day and saved 600 megabytes. Holy jeez. Yeah, that's a lot. And if all else fails, restore your iPhone. This is something you might have to do, especially if system data is taking up a ton of gigabytes. I've seen some phones with like 75 gigabytes of system data. This is where the restore be a good fit. Definitely. And before you do, make sure you have a backup in iCloud. Let's close out of Twitter. Go back into the settings app. Tap on your name at the top of the screen. Then tap iCloud. Tap iCloud backup and tap backup now. There are some other tech YouTubers out there who are telling people not to restore from iCloud backups because system data will come right back with it. Well, according to Apple, that's completely wrong, along with a lot of the other steps they tell you to do. Also, if you erase all content and settings on your iPhone without an iCloud backup, you need to go back in and reinstall every single one of your apps. It's just not a good solution for this problem. And restoring your iPhone every week is just it's not, it's not good. <laughs> it's not a solution. To restore an iPhone, you'll hook it up to your computer. If you're running Windows or an older Mac, you'll use iTunes. If you have a newer Mac, like mine, yep. you'll use Finder. Then you can just tap Restore iPhone, and it'll go through and be like a brand new iPhone when it's done. Yeah, we got a guide in the description section of this video. Now, if you're sitting there and you're saying, I can't back up to iCloud, I don't have enough iCloud storage space. What do you know? We have a new video, how to free up iCloud storage space. Watch that next.